It's one of those things that it's, it's, it sucks to see because their lives were ultimately ruined for speaking out about the truth. But here's the thing. There comes great risk to stuff. Comes, you know, my life doesn't get lavish because of what I'm doing today and what I've been doing. It yeah. becomes hell. I've had um, numerous encounters with fucking helicopters hovering over my house. They were hovering over my dad's house. They get so low where they rattle the walls. Scare the shit out of the animals that we've got. You know, his dogs were going fucking crazy at that point. And he was concerned because he was home. And he was like, I've never heard anything like that. So, you know, having, I, I taken videos of this too, but seeing Blackhawks, seeing regular black helicopters that don't even have insignias on them, nothing. And they're just sitting there. But the thing about it that is at least noticeable about this, and it's just kind of a, there's a hysterical factor to this. How much money they're fucking spending on this to happen to try to either intimidate me or anybody else for that matter. There's some elected officials and even some government officials I know they're having the same thing happen to them because they've told me about it personally through our encrypted source of what we talk about. So they instructed me that any time that something like this happens that I could record it, take pictures because they'll see the timestamps of everything taken and let them know the time and they'll investigate it. Because they can have access to the FAA systems and among other systems that I can actually relay where these people are going. They can listen into their comms, you know, because they have to guide through the FAA air traffic, you know, where they're going. I live by the airport in Denver. And the airspace there is restricted because they have airplanes that are flying, you know, every directions to try to, you know, passenger airliners or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's not a normal flight path for helicopters. That's what stuck out to me. Um, they were doing it at my place of business where they'd fly over, they'd stop, and then, you know, they would bank off. My dad's house, they get low, you know, enough. Um, it's just, you know, it doesn't become glamorous by speaking about this. And We're you have people maybe that you've met through uh, when you testified in front mm -hmm. of uh, the Intelligence Committee that, yep. that are helping you. Yep. They're telling you, hey, record this shit, time yes. stamp it, let us know any information you can possibly get. Yes, because they said they'll look into it because they know. I mean, and several of them are having to deal with this personally. Is this happening to... Any of the other whistleblowers that you know? I know it happens to Dr. Greer all the time. Okay. Um, I, other whistleblowers, I'm not sure. Okay. It's not something that, you know, maybe they do notice, you know, because you're hypervigilant with what's going on. Because, I mean, with what we're doing, it's putting us in the spotlight, but it's also putting the fucking crosshairs on onto us. And the only thing I'm thankful is coming public with this information, at least if something does happen. And I'm not going to rule that out. But if anything does happen, and it kind of proves what we're talking about to be true. And the reason being is because they would not be going through these measures to try to intimidate for no reason. Yeah. We're keeping people up at night because of what we're talking about, and that needs to happen. Yeah. So, you know, and I've I even told these government officials when I had my meetings, I'm like, first and foremost, you guys need to understand something. I am in a right state of mind to do this. I don't feel like harming myself. I don't feel like, you know, because everybody makes the joke that Epstein didn't kill himself. No way in shape or form related to that, right? And um, so uh, same goes here. Like I don't, f I have no means to harm myself. So if anything happens, it's not from me. Well, thanks for, thanks for saying that. Well, um, yeah, I mean, that needs to be on record and people yeah. need to understand that because if something does, it's not because I, you know, I turn a gun on myself or anything like this. Specifically, I'm going to talk about something, um, El, Tor El Toro, um, Marine Corps Air Station El Toro. I'm sure you're familiar with that. It was out in California. Um, there was a uh, colonel there that was didn't even know that this was going on on his base. They, but they were flying flights in that had drugs on them, and they were unloading it on his base. And he found out about it, so he went to question them. Two days later, they find him dead. Really? Yep. Is and this on record anywhere? Yes, it is. You can Google this information. Put Marine Corps uh, Marine Corps Colonel uh, suicide El Toro. Okay. okay. You can pull this out. Anybody of these viewers can do that too. Um, the family thought it was very alarming because the circumstances. So they did a second uh, opinion for an autopsy. And they said that there was extreme blunt force trauma to his head, which killed him. But then they had the gunshot wounds, so there's a shotgun that were supposed to stage to look like a suicide. And um, so I'm glad that the family actually got the second opinion to say, no, it was blunt force trauma to the back of the head is what killed him, and they tried to make it look like a suicide. And this is a colonel, and this thing that sucks about this is the Marine Corps itself actually tried to use this as a tool to say, you know what, suicide awareness is such a big thing and it happens with every rank and they were using this guy for this purpose. But then all of a sudden you start delving into this information and seeing that, you know, the reports that he was making about these illegal flights coming in and they were unloading drugs. 
I mean, it, it clearly, these guys, it doesn't matter what rank you are, it doesn't matter what position in government you have, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. If you're going against what they're uh, exposing what they're doing, they're going to get you. So if something does happen, I'm just putting it out there that it's not from my own doing. I don't fucking piss anybody at maybe, you know, maybe in the business world to a degree, but it's not enough for them to sit there and, and do something like that. And I'm glad that I have a, a private security firm where I've got some guys who look out for my best interests and they know what I'm doing. So they've got my back, realistically speaking. And, you know, and that's the thing, too, is any other whistleblowers who, you know, because I urge other people to come out. If they're needing protection out of the way, I'll help with that. I'll orchestrate, I'll orchestrate. But, too, the other thing is, too, coming out in the fashion that we did was the best because now the right people in the government know. So it's almost like having a pit bull that's one to rip you to fucking shreds, but you have this fence that's between you and this pit bull. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the government's going to be that fence and along with the the spotlight that this put me in. Yeah. Because it's unsettling to sit there and see these helicopters, man. It's just, it's, it's hysterical. You sit there and wave them, but it's like, keep wasting your fucking money.